Hey kids, time to do cylindrical coordinates and, and integrating by transforming into cylindrical, a cylindrical system. So first we're just gonna practice the conversion. So remember in 2D with polars, we would sometimes transform our um, integrand and bounds to polars so that our integration became easier. Well in 3D, it's kind of the same situation. Instead of in 2D, remember you we radiated out in the R direction and rotated theta, right? Just take this axis and put it down here, right? I still have a pole. I'm still going to radiate a radius out into the quadrant and rotate theta from the positive x. Once I do that, though, I am just going to, once I get to that position on the in the two dimensions, I'm just going to raise up from there a distance of z. So z is still going to be, right, my height. The clues to when I should use cylindrical, besides when your homework tonight is just going to be use cylindrical, um, our regions are going to involve symmetry around the z-axis, and the triple integral has circular expressions floating around in the integram, in the bounds, or both. So let's do our conversion. The conversions are the same, right? I said Z was, uh, Z was gonna be Z. So these, there's nothing new here. So if I want you to plot the point, three, negative, three, negative, seven, and convert, this is rectangular, X, Y, and Z. And I want you to take it into R, theta, and Z. So Z doesn't change. So can you picture where this would be? If I'd be in rectangulars, I would go out three, back negative three, and down negative seven, down there into the third octant, you know, or whatever, I don't know what octant that's called, but right down, down below, negative seven. So my radius is no big deal, right? which is just three root two, but theta is inverse tangent. Now think, negative three over three is inverse tangent of negative one. If you use your calculator, that's gonna tell you negative pi over four, right? But I want you to think about rotating from the positive x-axis, right? The positive x-axis, where am I going to be? Okay, let's go the other way. I'm giving you R, theta, and Z, and I want you to convert back to rectangular. My Z stays the same. So I need my X, but that's just R cosine of two pi over three and my r is two, and y is two sine two pi over three, but that's just going to be two times cosine of two pi over three is negative a half. So I get negative one, And sine 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, positive. 2's cancel out, and I get root 3. And z is still equal to 1. Now, does that make sense? Think about where you would be. Radius of 2 and a theta of 2 pi over 3. Where would you be? 2 pi over 3 would be here. Negative 1 in the x direction and up 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about here. Radiate out 2 and up 1.
Does it make sense that negative 1, root 3, and 1 are the rectangular coordinates? Right? You would go negative 1, 1 1.7-ish, and up 1. How about the equation? Equation here, we mostly want our z's by its, we want our z by itself, so this just turns into r squared. And if I get z by itself, I have plus and minus. Okay. All right, let's actually do some integrating. Now, I want you to remember that when we were in polars and we did integration, right, in 2D, when we transformed, transformed f of xy into polars, what did you have to do? There was a price to pay, right? You took an extra r dr d theta. That same thing is going to happen in polars. I'm sorry, in 3D, it was cylindrical. You're going to have a function in terms of x, y, and z. And we're going to turn that into a function in r theta and z. We have to pay the price with the extra r. Now, because we are doing these things centered around um, the z-axis, we kind of we separate the r and the dr. Okay, but don't forget that extra r. Pay the price for going to cylindrical. So. Think about polars, right? Again, in 2D, polars allowed you to kind of consider working within a circle, right? Well, cylindrical allows you to work within a cylinder, right? That's what we're doing, right? Working within a cylinder. So let's try one. All right. When you are working with your triple integrals, I don't know why they decided to call it E, they just decided to call it E, I don't know. So hopefully even without this sketch, you would know this how to draw this, x squared plus y squared and your plane because your step one, just like before, you still wanna think about 3D and you still wanna wonder about what are your bounds. And as I said, we are mostly gonna be centered around the Z axis, so you're looking for Z bounds. Then you are going to draw in two dimensions to look for your r and theta bounds. Okay, so I'm going to set this problem up as if it was rectangular. So I drew my paraboloid. Oh, it's terrible, terrible. Drew my paraboloid, thought about, right, with z bound, you want to think about top minus bottom. Right, so my top bound is the plane z equals 4, and the bottom bound is the curve z equals x squared plus y squared. So in rectangular, my z bounds would be there, then I'm going to think about 2D, project down or set these two equal to one another. There I have my circle in 2D. Draw my strip, 
The top is 4 minus y squared, x squared, sorry. Bottom is negative 4 minus x squared. And then my, these strips in 2D go from negative 2 to 2. So hopefully you can see that this would be pretty challenging to integrate. So I think to myself, self, should I do cylindrical? With, now my integrand didn't have any circular stuff in it, but my both my Z and my Y bounds have some circles in it. So if I want to turn this into polars, uh, cylindrical, remember the price to pay is the R. We keep the DZ here. And I keep my integrand z there. But now look at my bounds. What are my z bounds going to be? x squared plus y squared, isn't that just r squared? And up here, the top, just z is still equal to 4. How about my y bounds? My y bounds now don't have that square root in it, right? What are my y bounds? It's just a circle. It's a circle with a radius of what? And then how about my theta spinning around that circle? Right, so let's work inside out. They did ask me to evaluate. So again, be watch your directions. If I ask you to evaluate or just set up, now on your homework, I didn't, I eliminated a bunch of homework problems. So you, I am going to want you to um, actually integrate them, but hopefully it's not too bad. So what do we have here, right? We're integrating with respect to Z. So R is just a constant. So we have Z squared over two. R evaluated at R squared and four. So 4 squared, 16 over 2 is 8. R minus R squared in there. R squared is R to the fourth times another R, R to the fifth. But I'm just integrating this dr going from 0 to 2. So what do I have? 4r squared minus, that's a 5, so that's r to the 6th over 12. Evaluated at 0 and 2. That's nice because the 0 is going to go away, right? So what do I have here? 16 minus 2 to the 6, 64 over 12. And that's just going to be evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Not evaluated, I'm sorry. Integrated from 0 to 2 pi. And actually, while I was here, if I really wanted to, right, since I have only R stuff, I could split this up, right, and do my product of the two. I couldn't do that here, but I could here. Nevertheless, I'm going to get 16 theta. I mean, I guess I could put that together, couldn't I? 
What is that 32 over 3, I guess? Looking at my notes. Hopefully I did that right. Did my fraction work right? 32 over 3 d theta. From 0 to 2 pi. I don't know why this pen goes weird every once in a while. So I'm just going to get 64 pi over 3 when I'm done. Woohoo! Let's do another one. Notice this one just asked me to set up. Set up the integral to find volume. If you're using a triple integral to find volume, what is your integrand? Okay. So, since I have a cylinder and a sphere here, I think I'm going to go to cylindrical. And remember, my integrand is just going to be a 1. So what do you think my relationships are here, right? I'm spinning around the circle. My d theta is not a big, a big shock. 0 to 2 pi. What's your 2d? Here's your 2d, right? Woohoo! 1 to negative 1. So it's a circle of a radius. 0 to 1, and then what's my z? Do you see where my z is? Right? z squared is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. What is that? Four minus r squared, right? So this is negative square root of 4 minus r squared, and this is positive square root of 4 minus r squared. All right? Not so bad, and I didn't, uh, didn't ask you to actually evaluate that. Just set it up. All right. Let's do one more. And then I'll let you go. So this one I just want you to convert. I'm giving it to you set up in rectangular, right? So I've got, here is I have an integrand. Here is my, right, my dz, dx, dy. So be careful of what I'm saying here. Be careful of what I'm, information I'm giving you right there. So these are your z's. What are these? Yeah, these are x numbers. And what are these? So what's going on here with my, right? OK, this is great, a great, great shape. But as you're looking down here, what's happening with my 2D shape, right? I set up. I set up my situation here. I paid the price. If I'm going to go into cylindrical, I pay the price with R, D, R. Keep your D, Z, D, theta. So what am I going to make my Zs, right? My Zs are going to stay. Right? It's not changing Z, but I am going to change X and Y. What is this in 2D? x equals 0, and x equals the square root of 1 minus square, y squared, going from y negative 1 to 1. Do you see why this is a big deal? That you recognize? This is a semicircle, but t'other way. So what is that going to make your thetas? Okay, I got that from my 2D shape. What's your radius, though? Right, that's still going to be 0 to 1. And what are you going to do with Z's here? Right, what is Z? 
R squared, what's Z up here? R. Done, right? Woohoo! Oh, I don't think so. What have we forgotten? Ah, darn it, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> here are my Y bounds, here are my X bounds, here are my Z bounds. So I took care of all of that, but what did I not do? Take care of my integrand, X, Y, and Z. So there's X, here's Y. Remember Z just stays Z. What is this? Where did this come from? That's my R here, right? They just put it in front. Again, they didn't ask me to do anything with this. They just asked me to convert it. I'm done. They didn't ask me to evaluate. Pretty freaky seeing my words come out there. <laughs> I'm on a newer computer, so I will not, didn't have this option before. All right. Hint, don't forget that sometimes you can split up, right? Look at, what, look at this problem here. I only have R's and thetas in my integrand. I don't have any Z's. Since that's true... I can split this up, right? Look for it, just makes your math a little easier if you can look for when you can split out. And sometimes even if you can't, like I showed you before in one of the first examples, even if you can't with the first integrand, you often can when you're down to this part. Okay. Because oftentimes you are just going zero to two pi, right? All right, have fun with your homework and I will see you tomorrow.